So we wanted to uh, we wanted to replicate that experience, but in a hardware device because uh, we wanted to encapsulate you know a good amount of that um, hardware uh, that you would normally buy into a consumer device. Yeah, and this thing is dead simple. So we turn it on. We're going to hit this button here. It's connecting, and there we go. We're live streaming right now on the app. It's that simple. It's that simple. Yeah. So when people get on to Blast Radio, what what's it going to be like? What are people doing on there? Well, right now we—I mean—we started off like in the uh, electronic music world and in the musicians' world because those people are um, a lot more adept to understanding how audio works. And you know, while we were sort of learning how this is all going to work, we also wanted to work with people who had a bit of an understanding of how audio works, generally speaking. Um, so we launched actually our first product, uh, our Blast Box, um, in sort of the DJ world. And yeah. so as a result, like the platform does have a lot of electronic music and a right. lot of DJs. But then you also have your like, you know, more traditional like radio show style formats where it's just people talking, maybe playing some music and, you know, doing Q&A's with the audience. Um, actually, your show is uh, sort of in that format. It's very popular. Yeah, very. Yeah, one, people are one, loving one, it. One of the mainstays yeah, of Blast Radio. Exactly. <laughs> and it's, um, you know, it's different a lot of other platforms in part because it's audio, right? And we were talking before we got on about how you kind of left behind a lot of the strategies that other apps have created. Why are you doing that? Did you just forget that you need to make money or you got a new way <laughs> to do things here? Well, no, I, I, I do think we actually have a novel uh, model for the distribution and growth of the platform. And, um, you know, look, I think entrepreneurs always are looking for some new way to do things uh, almost unnecessarily. I think that this was necessary because I think a lot of uh, what happens in audio is that people will come in and try to create a social app in audio and copy and paste all the sort of uh, tricks of the trade for your visual social media. However, uh, visual social media really does depend on users looking at the, the media and then eventually pressing the share button. So uh, that's kind of antithetical to a use case where I want to take my phone and put it in my pocket and listen for half an hour to an hour, et cetera. Um, so I think it required a new playbook. So we try to write our own playbook. Yeah, so you get on this app and you're not trying to manipulate people the way that I feel on you know, a lot of other apps, right? There's no algorithm that's feeding me all the content. There's some in the Explore tab, but pretty much you're listening to the stuff you subscribe to. There's not a bunch of notifications trying to get you to stare at your phone. It's a really simple platform. Yeah, I think that the the trick is uh, if we can get you into an experience where you're listening to something for, I mean, this is the other part of it, is that we're expecting you to listen for, um, you know, on average, our users listen for 20 minutes at a time. And so, you know, it's not the same experience as like, you know, scrolling through your, like, you know, your social feeds and like you're getting a, like, you know, can you imagine how many Instagram photos it would take or like, you know, TikToks to like, you know, fill 20 minutes of time. Right. And, you know, and that's obviously the, like, uh, the average. I mean, really, you're seeing people who spend like you know hours and like in a day listening to Blast. So, it's it's a deeper experience. Um, I feel like everything that we've learned about audio is that everything's quality, not quantity. And I mean, it's kind of a marvel of engineering. Like you said, like you guys have the whole thing running on the processor on the Wi-Fi chip, right? Yeah, essentially. Yeah, we <laughs> we were able to like. I mean, again, these are all cost constraints. On some level, I mean, this is a classic engineering thing yeah. of like. You know, you you just do your best with the limited constraints you have. We're not a giant company. There's very few hardware startups out there. Mm -hmm. um, but we were able to. But in in order to hit our uh, hit, the, hit the economics necessary to be able to bring this thing to market, uh, we had this thing running off of um, essentially a two dollar chip. Hmm. Now there's obviously much more components to it. Right. But the reason being that by saving money on the compute side of things, we were able to spend more money on the audio side of right. things because we wanted to make sure that the audio sounded it really good. sound good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, um, so, you know, that's really a credit to our embedded systems and hardware engineering team. So, yeah. So that. Yeah. Starts so working. you talked about other audio platforms, right? Yeah. And there are some of them, but it feels like this is just a nut that no one's been able to crack, right? There's Spotify where you can go listen to your favorite songs, but live audio on the internet, like no one's really figured it out. Like we had Clubhouse a couple years ago. That's almost completely forgotten now. And then Amazon has a similar app that's sort of doing what you guys are doing. And you're a small startup in Brooklyn, a couple of guys that are going head to head. 
and really matching what Amazon is delivering. What are other companies getting wrong about audio? Well, you know, it's really hard to say. Um, I, I can, I, what I can speak to is the fact that audio quality seems to be uh, constantly disregarded in a lot of these solutions in favor of, uh, um, you know, a lot of them use VoIP, right? Mm -hmm. And what that means is it's uh, voice over IP. It's the same technology used for like doing Zoom calls right. and et cetera. So imagine it's like an audio only conference call. And that's really great for some stuff. Like, you mm -hmm. know, tw I'm a big fan of Twitter Spaces, for example. And like Twitter Spaces does a great job of, uh, you know, helping you like tune into your favorite personality when the news is breaking. You can hear them like talk about like what's going on, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. And that's really great for what I would call intentional listening. Right. Which like, you know, if I really want to know what's like what's happening uh, at this exact moment and I'm paying close attention, I really don't care about the audio quality um, or I can disregard the audio quality in service of like the absolute relevance of what I'm about to listen to. Yeah, I know my experience broadcasting on this platform, like I didn't do anything to like advertise it or promote it, but I get on there every time I broadcast, whether it's like two in the afternoon or the middle of the night, like people tune in and listen. It's not a lot of people, but like you're saying, it's that quality engagement. And you could tune it differently to get people to spend more time on here or maybe like stare at it more, but it's about the quality. Yeah, the quality, I mean, it's uh, it, it comes down to like, do you like, I mean, how many fans do you have like that are like true fans, people who will actually give you a dollar, go, go to your show, subscribe to your newsletter, whatever it is. And I think that we've learned, especially sort of in like this, like almost social media hangover post pandemic is that, uh, you know, a lot of that stuff has been inflated. A lot of the stuff has been like less qualitative. Um, you're seeing advertisers run away from influencer marketing because it doesn't perform very well because the numbers don't make that much sense. On Blast, like the idea here is that like it's going to be quality for, uh, quality versus quantity at every uh, sort of turn of this company, and I think that's also in the experience of the creators.